What's up, Met fans? Welcome back to Talking Mets and Rob. How is everybody doing? Before I get started talking about where I think the top 20 MLB free agents are going to go in this offseason, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys, so we're going to stop from start from the 20th top free agent, and we're going to work out all the way down to the number one free agent where I think they're going to go. So we're going to start it off right now with number 20, and that is Mitch Haniger, the former Seattle Mariner, who is 32 years old and is a free agent. I think he is going to go to the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers need offense, and I do think Mitch Haniger will be a perfect addition to their outfield and, of course, their lineup. Going with number 19. Jose Abreu. I think Jose Abreu will be a perfect addition for the Atlanta Braves. I think the Atlanta Braves are going to finally rid themselves of Marcelo Zuna. So they have a nice opening at that DH spot. And Jose Abreu will be a really good addition with the average and provides a little bit more power. And I do think he would fit well in the middle of that lineup around the fifth or sixth spot in the Braves lineup. So Jose Abreu. To the Atlanta Braves. Going in at number 18 will be Josh Bell. I think Josh Bell will be a perfect addition for the Seattle Mariners. They need a little bit more offense in that lineup. And losing Mitch Haniger, I think Josh Bell can provide the average. And we all know he can provide that power as well. So I think he's going to end up in the, in the Northwest with the Seattle Mariners. Coming in at number 17, Andrew Benintendi can play left field or right field. I think the New York Yankees. Are going to have a hard time looking for outfielders, considering what I think is going to happen. Andrew Benintendi will be a good addition to keep with the New York Yankees, and I think the Yankees will have no choice but to sign Andrew Benintendi this offseason at number 17. Coming in at number 16 is a polarizing free agent who did not play in the 2022 season, and that is Michael Conforto. I think Michael Conforto can still be a very good player with any team that needs an outfielder or possible DH, but I'm going to go with the New York Mets taking back Michael Conforto on around the one-year deal. Michael Conforto can easily slide into right field with no issues, throwing Marte over to center field. I think M Michael Conforto is going to get a one-year deal, and it's like a show-me type of deal, and I think the Mets will jump at that opportunity to bring back one of their own that was brought up through the system in Michael Conforto at number 16. At number 15, Jock Peterson. Jock Peterson, we know, provides a lot of power, but does strike out a lot, but still comes up very clutch in the playoffs. We saw with multiple teams, the Dodgers, the Braves, and I do think the New York Mets are going to sign Jock Peterson as one of their top signings at the DH spot. I think he's a perfect type of hitter to put in the middle of their lineup. We all know that Pete Alonso had no protection in the New York Mets lineup. Jock Peterson, number 15 to the New York Mets. Number 14, another New York Met that is a free agent, and that is Taiwan Walker. I, Taiwan Walker is 30 years old. I think he can be an asset to almost every rotation. If you need somebody as your three or four type of starter, I think Taiwan Walker fits well with many teams that need pitching. And I do think the Toronto Blue Jays are going to make that attempt to sign Taiwan Walker and put them in the middle of that rotation. And I think he would be an awesome addition to the Toronto Blue Jays. Coming in at number 13, Andrew Chafin. Andrew Chafin was very good for the Detroit Tigers. I really thought my New York Mets were going to get him last offseason. But now I think they're going to right the wrong. And the New York Mets are going to sign the lefty Andrew Chafin. To a two-year deal, and I think the Mets need that left-handed arm in the bullpen, and I don't think they're going to make that mistake again. Andrew Chafin to the Mets. Coming in at number 12, Justin Verlander. We all know how good Justin Verlander was with the Houston Astros. Revitalized his career with the Houston Astros after being traded from the Detroit Tigers. 40 years old, coming off of Tommy John. Nobody was expecting anything from them. The Astros took another shot on him. And he delivered, not only in the season, but also in the postseason and got the Astros another world championship. But I think Justin Verlander and the Yankees 
are the perfect match. The New York Yankees are going to sign Justin Verlander to a one-year $25 million deal, and that's where I think would fit the Yankees perfectly, and he's going to go to the team that he continues to beat in the New York Yankees. Coming in at number 11, another New York Met free agent, Chris Bassett. Chris Bassett doesn't throw very hard, but he's very quirky. He has about nine pitches, and he would be another asset to any rotation. He could be a number two. He ended up being the ace of the New York Mets staff when Scherzer and DeGrom went down, and he is just very good. He can throw you seven innings. He'll have no problem throwing over 100 pitches, but the one team that I think really needs that starting pitching is the Baltimore Orioles, and I think Chris Bassett is going to the Baltimore Orioles. Orioles and Chris Bassett seem like the perfect match, and that's where I think he's going to go at number 11. At number 10, Anthony Rizzo. I think it's pretty fair that everybody thinks that Anthony Rizzo, even though he opted out of his contract with the New York Yankees, he's going to go back there. The Yankees have no choice but to sign Anthony Rizzo because they have no one else to go after. So Anthony Rizzo to the New York Yankees at number 10. Coming in at number 9, Carlos Rodon, a very good lefty that signed a, a, a two-year deal with an option with the San Francisco Giants. I thought the New York Mets were going to go after him before they made that Chris Bassett sign-in um, trade. But I do think the Mets are going to right another wrong and sign Carlos Rodon and put him in that rotation. It would be a really nice addition for the New York Mets. And I think the Mets are going to go strong after Carlos Rodon, Rodon at number nine. Coming in at number eight is Wilson Contreras. Many teams can look to need a catcher with very good defense and very good offense. But which team do you think would need that catcher to solidify the backstop and also be a big bat in the lineup? I think the Houston Astros are going to sign Wilson Contreras. It's an outside-the-box thinking, but the owner of the Houston Astros, Jim Crane, clearly wants a big move after he basically got rid of his front off, his front off, his administration, and I think he's going to make a big signing. I think he's going to make the offense even better this year. They're going to lose Justin Verlander to the Yankees, and I think they're going to sign Wilson Contreras because they did sign Christian. They did trade for Christian Vasquez, and he didn't provide that offense that they were looking for. And I think they're going to make sure that offense is not going to be a problem at the catcher position. Wilson Contreras to the Astros. Number seven on the list, Brandon Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo has been a very good player for the New York Mets. Projected to get well over $100 million, but this is the first year he played over 140 games in his career. The last couple of years, it was less than 100 games, constantly injured, but he finally became, was healthy this year, but it was a contract year. That scares me a lot with Brandon Nemo. He doesn't have an arm. I like him offensively, but I don't think he is worth a contract over $100 million, but there's desperate teams out there like the Seattle Mariners and the Colorado Rockies that are looking for a player of that caliber. I think the Colorado Rockies are going to sign Brandon Nemo. It's his hometown team when he grew up in Wyoming. Every time he goes to Colorado, his family always comes to Colorado to, to watch him play. I think Colorado is a great destination for uh, the Colorado Rockies and a great destination for Brandon Nimmo. And I think Nimmo is finally going to leave the Mets. I know Mets fans are not going to be happy with that, but I think he's going to sign with the Colorado Rockies. Coming in at number six, Dansby Swanson. Dansby Swanson was such a key in the World Series run for the Braves in 2021 and was one of their best players in 2022. And I don't think the Braves are going to let Dansby Swanson go. I think he's going to stick with the Atlanta Braves and be a big part of the leadoff spot and that lineup and the Atlanta Braves for at least six or seven years with the team down south. Going at number five, Xander Bogarts. Xander Bogarts, I thought, was just going to stay with the Red Sox, but they have problems signing Devers at this point, and I think Bogarts is on his way out, and I think the St. Louis Cardinals are going to make a big effort for Xander Bogarts. What else is new? The Cardinals find another way to get another big name and be a pain in the ass in Major League Baseball. They seem to always 
find a way to make the playoffs. They always find a way to get these players, if it's not un- with the cheap, with big-time trades that don't cost a lot. They always find a way to get those big names, and I think they're going to sign Xander Bogarts to put that shortstop going forward. Coming in at number four, Carlos Correa. He signed basically a one-year deal with the Minnesota Twins, and now he bet on himself, and I think he's going to get a big deal with some team, and it's an NL East team, and it's going to be the Philadelphia Phillies. I think last, last year... I predicted Correa was going to sign with the Philadelphia Phillies. They needed a shortstop. I felt like it was the perfect opportunity for the Phillies to do that. They did not do that. This time, I think the Phillies are going to sign Correa, bring him to the NL East, to the Phillies, put him around Schwarber and Harper. It's going to be a deadly lineup with the Philadelphia Phillies, with Correa in the middle of that lineup. Coming in at number three, Trey Turner. I think the Mets are. Internally talking about Trey Turner since last year. And I think they're going to be extremely involved. And they're going to be very aggressive in getting Trey Turner. Is why I put Carlos Correa with the Phillies. Because I think the Mets are not going to let Trey Turner go. Trey Turner and I think the Mets offseason evolves around Trey Turner. And I think the Mets are not going to let him go to the Philadelphia Phillies. And he's going to be a New York Mets. Trey Turner to the Mets. Coming in at number two. Jacob DeGrom. Jacob DeGrom with two Cy Youngs, one of the best pitchers in baseball, when healthy, and that's a key word, when healthy, you would think the Mets would be no way letting him go to any other team. But the problem is, one is health, and two, I do not think Jacob DeGrom wants to be in New York. With that said, I think the Texas Rangers are desperate for starting pitching, and I think they're going to go that fifth year with Jacob DeGrom, and I don't think the Mets or any other team is going to risk giving a contract to Jacob DeGrom with that many years, and I think that's why the Texas Rangers are going to snatch Jacob DeGrom from the New York Mets, and he's going to be going to the AL West and be the ace of the Texas Rangers. And coming in at number one, we all know who that is, Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. 62 home runs, AL record, had almost missed the triple crown, just missed it with the average, but he's a great player. We all know that. He can play center. He can play right. Just a big bat in that lineup. Anybody that has Aaron Judge is going to be a team that is going to be very hard to beat. But he is 30 years old, going to be 31. A lot of people don't think that you can give a 9-10 year deal to Aaron Judge, but I don't think this team cares, and that is the San Francisco Giants. The San Francisco Giants already said money is not an obstacle. They are not going to get outbid for Aaron Judge, and I don't think the Yankees are going to match any offer for the San Francisco Giants. The Yankees are going to you lose Aaron Judge. He's going back home to Northern Cali with the San Francisco Giants, with his idol, Barry Bonds, with the poster on his wall as a kid, Aaron Judge going home to the San Francisco Giants. So that is your top 20 MLB free agent predictions by me. How many are going to be right? We will see when the offseason is over. Hopefully soon, free agency will start to pick up in this MLB free agent frenzy period. But there is some honorable mentions that I want to say before we end this video. A couple of them is Trey Mancini. I think he's going to remain with the Astros, but I can see many teams going after Trey Mancini. Nathan Evaldi is a very interesting option. Uh, You can put him as your fourth number fifth starter. I can see the Mets, the Phillies. I can even see the Braves going after the veteran. Seth Lugo, I think he's going to be gone from the New York Mets. Ross Stripling is a per, uh, is a pitcher that you can put in the back end of your rotation. Look out for the Mets to go get him. Noah Syndergaard, I think, is going to be back with the Philadelphia Phillies either as a bullpen arm or as a as a number four, number five in the Phillies rotation. Adam Adovino, very good year for the New York Mets in the Mets bullpen. I do have a feeling the Mets might take another shot on Adovino, but look for the New York Yankees to go after him as well. And Jamison Tyone was. Okay as a Yankees pitcher, but I can see the Yankees bringing him back. I can see many teams bringing him back. Watch for the Baltimore Orioles. 
to get Jamison Tyne. So that is your predictions for all the top 20 free agents and a couple honorable mentions of where I think they're going to go. Once again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. Once again, guys, thank you for watching. And as always, Mets fans, let's go Mets.